Hi! The animation on the screen shows a very simple system, the double pendulum. It is as simple as attaching one pendulum at the end of another one. Yet, if we follow the time evolution of the double pendulum, we can instinctively attribute two properties to it. It is irregular and unpredictable. Irregular means that we cannot describe the patterns the pendulum displays using simple geometric shapes like circles or ellipses. Unpredictable means that if we tried to guess whether the pendulum would be to the right or to the left in 5 seconds from now, we probably wouldn't do much better than a coin toss. Now the double pendulum is one of many real world systems that display deterministic chaos. And in this short educational video I want to provide a simple and intuitive explanation of the mechanism behind this unpredictable aspect of deterministic chaos and leaving the irregularity aspect aside for now. So let's have a better demonstration of unpredictability. I have rewinded the animation and I added a second pendulum in green color. Both pendula obey exactly the same rules and their only difference is that they have a slightly different starting configuration. Now let's let the simulation run. And what we will notice is that after a small amount of time, the two pendula start to behave completely differently. Sometimes this is called the butterfly effect. It means that tiny variations in our knowledge of a system could lead to massive differences as the system evolves in time. But a more precise way to describe this is sensitive dependence on initial conditions, which means that exactly what the system does depends very sensitively on how it started. Alright, now before we carry on, let me point out an important detail, which is we are looking into systems that are deterministic. This means that they have no inherent randomness. The rules of the game are laid out at the start and we know exactly what these rules are. This means that if we know exactly the starting configuration of such a system, then we know exactly what it will do in the end of times. Now, it may sound paradoxical that such a scenario would lead to something unpredictable, but we will see how this works in a moment. For now, let me just point out that many real systems are chaotic. The weather is probably the prime example of a system that is irregular and unpredictable, uh, but billiards are another everyday example that shares this property. And I think we humans find billiards intuitive, maybe perhaps some of us have already played billiards, but most importantly because the basic principle underlying billiard dynamics is just specular reflection, which I think is easy to understand because we have all seen mirrors and that's kind of how mirrors work. So in the rest of the video I will use billiards as a means to explain what this deterministic chaos means and where it comes from. Although to, to be honest, to do this we have to make some modifications. You see, the regular billiard game is too dissipative. This means that over time, more and more balls go into the pockets and in the end of the day, we are left with an empty table, which is not very interesting. So the first step is to plug all holes. Now let's make a new billiard that has no holes in it and put it on the side and populate it with some preliminary balls. Now, believe it or not, this system is actually too complex to explain in a video and we have to make it simpler. So we do more, uh, two more modifications. We remove every ball except one and the remaining ball now has infinitesimal size. So now we see this ball moving around and as you would expect it, it is specularly reflected at the walls of the billiard and everything is fine. Now, unfortunately, this system is too simple. And for reasons that will become apparent in a moment, this system can never display chaos. But thankfully, it is very easy to fix this. We will just put an immovable disk in the middle of the billiard table and everything else remains as is. Now, this system is just complex enough to be chaotic and in the rest of the video, it will be our model system. Okay, the first thing to confirm is whether this system displays sensitive dependence on initial conditions. 
which is the unpredictability aspect of deterministic chaos. I've set up a simulation that has two balls, one purple and one green, which are very close to each other, and I will now let them go. Remember, there is no interaction between balls. Think of them as two different possible futures of a single ball roaming around the billiard alone. In any case, we see that indeed, after a short amount of time, the two initial conditions became completely unrelated. Now, while we are here, it's good to take the opportunity and be a bit more precise about this sensitive dependence on initial conditions. What does it mean precisely and how sensitive does it need to be for us to call it chaotic? Well, let's try to measure the distance, delta, between the two balls and how it changes with time. At the start, we have a very small distance between them and then we run the simulation again. Of course, we have already seen that the distance will increase uh, with time, and indeed, but let's be quantitative about it. Let's plot a graph of how this distance is changing with time, and to be a bit more precise, what we're plotting here is actually the logarithm of the distance. And we see that it increases fast initially, in an almost linear manner, and then it saturates. Now, if the slope of this uh, linear increase is, uh, let's say, lambda, this means that the distance itself is increasing with an exponential rate. This is called exponential divergence of nearby trajectories, and it is just another way to say sensitive dependence on initial conditions or the butterfly effect. The benefit, however, of using this terminology is that it shows us explicitly why chaotic systems are unpredictable, especially in the real world. You see, any real world measurement has some kind of finite uncertainty. Because of this exponential growth, it doesn't matter how small this initial uncertainty is. Sooner or later, it will become large enough so that it is noticeable, and this makes our predictions unusable. Uh, to put it into a practical pers perspective, it would have been impossible for us to a priori tell which of the two balls was the green and which was the purple if I haven't colored them already. Now, two quick notes before moving on. First, the saturation regime, uh, it, which happens after the initial exponential divergence, is also very important and we'll come, we will come back to this at the end. Now, secondly, this exponential divergence only holds for initial conditions that are very, very close to each other, and it doesn't hold if there are two initial conditions that are already apart from each other. Okay, so now you might ask, but what makes chaos? Why is it that some systems are chaotic and some are not? Now, on the left, we have the standard chaotic system that we have been using so far. And on the right hand side, I have two systems that are actually not chaotic. The top one is just the standard billiard without the disc in the middle. And the bottom one is some balls diverging to infinity exponentially fast. Even though they are diverging exponentially fast, the second case is not chaotic. So the question is, is there any simple ingredients we can put together and then we have deterministic chaos? Or it is just something unknown that cannot be separated into simpler concepts? Turns out there are two crucial ingredients, each one being present in one of the systems on the right, but only when combined together they create deterministic chaos. To understand what these two ingredients are, we will follow a small bundle of balls starting very close to each other. The bottom version will be in the chaotic billiard, and on the right I will show a zoom in into this bundle of balls. Now, let's play the simulation and follow them around. We see that the bundle is reflected at the wall, but nothing changes and the distance between the balls stays the same. But now, in the bottom case, where we have a reflection at the disk, the trajectories start spreading. So, in the top case, the distance between the balls was initially delta zero, and it has remained the same forever. In the bottom case, however, the distance between the balls increased due to the collision with the disk, and over time this adds up and creates this exponential divergence between nearby trajectories. This means that there needs to be some kind of local mechanism called stretching that separates nearby trajectories. 
For the chaotic billiard, this mechanism is the collisions with the disc in the middle. But that's not enough though. We need another mechanism that keeps the system bounded. If things were spreading forever, everything would, would go its own way to infinity. Now in the billiard, every time there is some trajectory that tries to escape, the walls keep it inside, as if they fold it back in. Therefore, there is a second mechanism that acts on a global level and keeps the system in finite bounds. This mechanism is called folding, and for the billiard example here, this is just the reflections at the outer wall. So there you have it, that's actually it. The essence of deterministic chaos is stretching and folding. As long as you have a system where both of these mechanisms coexist, you will have deterministic chaos, as well as all the side effects this entails, like irregularity and unpredictability. Now seriously, jokes aside, this amazingly complicated and unpredictable behavior we call deterministic chaos has its foundations in the same process as kneading dough. I think it's uh, kind of funny that in the end of the day, the unpredictability of real-world systems has its roots in the same process that makes bread. So perhaps uh, next time you have breakfast, you will think about this. Okay, of course, the difficulty is to identify the mechanisms that cause the stretching and folding. And that's the reason I chose billiards as the guiding example for this video, because there the situation is honestly as simple as it can get. Another example, the Lorentz system, which I'm currently showing on the screen, is uh, something most people that have heard the words deterministic chaos have probably seen already. I don't want to go into too many details, but for example here, it would be very hard to identify the stretching mechanism without going into mathematical details. Thankfully, we can uh, identify the folding mechanism in some sense, so now on the right half side I have initialized many different uh, initial conditions. Uh, importantly, they are not nearby initial conditions, and this means that they don't have exponential divergence. Nevertheless, I will let them now follow the dynamics of the Lorentz system and see what happens. And what happens is that they convert into this structure, this weird thing that looks a bit like a butterfly. So here the folding mechanism is in a sense the fact that the trajectories would converge over time into a specific structure. Before closing the video, I want to replay the animation from the title slide because we are now capable of understanding what's going on. Also, to be honest, I needed an excuse to play the animation again because it looks so damn cool. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. There are many, many popular videos on deterministic chaos from more like an overview perspective, but I think understanding it at a deeper level can be done in an intuitive manner and in a relatively short video. The simulations I've presented were done with the Dynamical Billiards and Dynamical Systems the packages for the Julia language, and the actual uh, animations were done with Interactive Dynamics and Machia, composed in PowerPoint. Everything you have seen on the screen uh, has been generated with some source code that is available for everyone, and you can find it in the description. So thank you very much. Bye bye.